Episode 160, What to Do with Your COVID-19 Imposed Sabbatical. This Week in Weddings is a support group for wedding industry entrepreneurs. We're the ones behind the scenes planning and designing the event, arranging the flowers, creating the invitations, or taking the photographs for a couple's most important day ever. No pressure. If you've been in the wedding industry for more than a minute, you know it's not all cake and confetti. Running a wedding business is hard, and it's certainly not for the faint of heart. This Week in Weddings is where we catch up on this often crazy but amazing industry and share tips on how to be a better business owner, all while supporting each other along the way. You're listening to This Week in Weddings with Kimberly Rhodes and Annie Roach. Hey guys, I'm Kimberly Rhodes, owner of Hitched Events. And I'm Annie Roach, owner of 5 by 7 Designs. Welcome back to the podcast. Annie, how are you doing? Hanging in there, working from home, <laughs> homeschooling a kid. I'm surviving, not thriving. So that's what I'm going to go know, for. Sometimes that's all you can do. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, this is just getting used to this new normal. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. Well, this week we are talking about our sabbatical that we <laughs> all are currently having. Forced. Be- <laughs> Forced sabbatical. Okay, so what's so funny is our guest, Sarah Balicki, has been on the podcast before talking about a sabbatical. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, she's like my idol for work-life balance. She has great balance. She does. She is like the only human I know who doesn't have her email on her phone. (laughs) And – she was talking to us about taking a sabbatical and taking time off. And at the time, I was like, that's crazy talk. Now, I'm like, yep, we all have it. So what are we going to do well, with it? Well, and most sabbaticals are like you would you imagine, you know, sipping sangria on a coast yeah. of Spain somewhere or, you know, some tropical beach. Yeah. But yeah, this is – Well, you and know, planned. Right. If you think right, about it right. ahead of time. You might usually have an itinerary maybe if you're a type A yeah. kind of person. Uh, but this, we're just kind of – we were just kind of thrown into it. It's true. But Annie, you and I have been doing some things on our sabbatical for we the podcast. Ha- we have. Uh, we, um, you know, we've, we've been Something doing thing we've been talking about for a long – In the scenes. Time. <laughs> and now it's here. So um, we have been asked – by people, how they can support us in the podcast. And for a long time, we're like, yes, we need to do something to like have people pay it forward. Yeah. Because I mean, a lot of people don't know. I mean, we, uh, we've invested a lot of our own money into this podcast. Podcasting is expensive. Y'all. <laughs> and I mean, if you do it right, I feel like there's cheap ways to do right. it for sure. But we want to do it the right way. And you know, we have um, monthly fees we had to pay. We've gone to conferences. We've you know, mm-hmm. we've we put mm-hmm. in our own uh, hard-earned money into it, and now we think it's Which time. Was fine. Yeah, but <laughs> we would love coronavirus. <laughs> we would love some support from you guys. If you guys feel, if you feel like you are, um, all this amazing information we're putting out there, um, we would love for you to put a little money towards it because I feel like, um, I know for me, just being part of this podcast, I have learned so much, and I can't even put a monetary value on what I've learned. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, legit, this is our, like, listener-supported radio moment, meaning, like, if you've gotten something from it, it's time to pay it forward. Because truly, like, we have hard costs. Like, the cost of our files to get stored, like, audio files are, you know, big files. We have to store those somewhere. Mm -hmm. Our web hosting, we have to pay for that. You know, there are expenses to just do the podcast. And so, you know, if you've gotten something out of it, we would love for you to pay it forward. So we have set up a Patreon account. It will be linked on our website, but it's also patreon.com slash this week in weddings where you can just contribute monthly. So it starts super small, yeah. like super duper small, like 10 cents a day. Yeah. I, f- I feel like we are uh, like the public radio pledge right now. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I, for real. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've made three Patreon levels, basically. The first, we're calling Pay It Forward. Mm -hmm. It's just $3 a month. Nothing. Yeah, like 10 cents a day. Nothing. That's literally 10 cents a day. Yeah. $3 is not even, not even a, not even a coffee. 
not even a coffee. I agree with that. $3 a month really to pay it forward, meaning just helping Annie and I with our expenses to run the podcast. Listen, we are not trying to get wealthy off the podcast. <laughs> we are just trying we're to cover not, our we're not costs. buying yachts here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe that's a long-term plan, but in the yeah. short term. And if we buy a yacht, you guys are all welcome to come on it. If, if <laughs> We'll have it this weekend <laughs> weddings yacht party. Exactly. I love it. So pay it forward. Literally, if you've just gotten value and just want to like – acknowledge that that's like small buy-in yeah three bucks a month perfect thank Annie, you tell the people if they want more what they <laughs> if can you have. now wait now act now there's more um <laughs> for level two it's six dollars a month and we are calling this better thing that's yeah thing. better than a latte yeah about 20 cents a day ish yeah I, I can do math in yeah. my head really quickly mm -hmm. um and this is, yeah, just, yeah. I think, what is the average cost of a, of a latte? I don't even know. I like the fancy fufu latte. So mine's probably like $9 for a latte. I don't even know. I mean, I feel like I barely get out of Starbucks for five bucks. Yeah. I mean, I haven't had a Starbucks in a while. So God knows. I don't even know how much they are these days. But yeah. So yeah, better than a latte, six bucks. Annie, tell the people what that gets them. Now, other than the satisfaction of knowing that they're helping <laughs> Other us. than the satisfaction and um, just the in your head knowing how much you're helping us um and being our heroes forever uh you'll also get uh, entrance into our facebook group woohoo okay so this is something that people this have been new. asking about for a while is like i'd love to get on a facebook group to discuss the episodes mm -hmm. and honestly we were like, yeah, that's a great idea, but that seems like a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, but now someone's going to monitor that Facebook group, and uh, you know, there's a time. Like, I, I know, personally, I know, Kimberly, have you been? I've been in a Facebook group where it's like, I don't think there's any monitors, and it's like a free for all, like spam, yeah. and then like people just going crazy. So it takes time and effort to moderate that. Um, yeah, but now we have the time, well, and we've also now uh, we have the time invited a few uh, super fans, couple moderators, moderators to yes. help us with this. Yeah, so we're starting with just a couple of moderators. Should we give them a shout out? I think we should. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. So our moderators to get us started are Kelly McWilliams. You guys hear us talk about all the time. She's been a guest on the podcast twice. Our number one. Our number three. Our number one super fan. <laughs> And also Julianne Smith, who's been on the podcast in the early days, and um, she's really helpful, one of the smartest people I know. So we're excited to have both of them helping us kind of monitor that Facebook group and chiming in and getting us started with that. So yeah, and we're excited. Shouts out to them. To also, so we'll be able to, you know, discuss the week's episode, and then um, we're going to be inviting our guests to do some sort of live uh, discussion. Um, in the Facebook group and you get, yeah. you get to so join what's, that. What we love about the podcast is that like we get to ask our own questions like off the top of our head as we're talking to a guest. Like we get to ask the things that we're thinking about. But then after the fact, we're like, oh, but our audience might have yeah. had questions or like, you know, they haven't had the opportunity to ask the guests follow up questions. or like to, you know, maybe yeah. to embellish more on that. Um, like, like, that gives you the option to have that more one-on-one -on -one time with the guest, which is yeah. amazing. For sure. So we're super excited about that. We're going to have a weekly in the Facebook group, a live situation with different guests who've been on the podcast. So you can ask and your own questions. And that's so cheap. $6 a month. I mean, how much do you pay to go to these conferences to hear a speaker? More you, don't even get to, you don't even really month. get to do a live session with them. I mean, this is yeah. cheap. Maybe we should increase the price, Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> baby steps, baby steps. So $6 a month to get you not only satisfaction with helping us, the private Facebook group with the live chat once a week. Um, we're also going to list you and your business on our website. So, you know, everybody wants those inbound links. Mm -hmm. So you'll get that it's as well. It's bragging rights too, you know. Bragging rights. And then um, we're working on a This Week in Weddings merch store. So um, – those listeners better than a latte supporters will get 10% off on a future This Week in Weddings merch store. Awesome. Awesome. And then we've got our final level, which is the cream of the crop, um, <laughs> my new best friends. Uh, we've got yep. the This Week in Weddings super fan. That's the, the top level. And this is $20 a month. Which also is really not all that much. Yeah. I mean, at least for me, I will say that I – 
this whole coronavirus thing has made me like look at the things I spend money on mm-hmm. and don't even think about. Like, you know what I mean? Like I will spend money on stuff if it's a recurring like monthly bill and not even think twice oh. about it. I know we're in different times, but like truly $20 a month, that's nothing. Oh, you want to hear a funny story, Kimberly? So we are, Kimberly and I and a lot of Dallas people are in a um, kind of coronavirus text group uh, for wedding industry. And one of, uh, one of them was talking about how uh, like, you know, just with the Corona snacks, crazy, they were going to join Weight Watchers. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. So I went to go join Weight Watchers. Uh, I realized I had been I had been a member of Weight Watchers for like the <laughs> three years, paying a monthly <laughs> fee. I didn't even know. That is hilarious. $24 a month for three years. Whoops. That, wow. That <laughs> is hilarious, Annie. Oh, well, oh my gosh. I guess. You know what? <laughs> Think about you could have been putting that money towards I could have had a life and wedding for fan. the price for that total price. <laughs> that is so funny. Well, super fans, twenty dollars a month gets you everything, including the Facebook group, the live chats, listing on our website, discount off of our future merch store. But you also will get drum roll, please. A this week in weddings t shirt that we've been talking and, and promising. <laughs> <laughs> We've been for years. Probably as long as I've been a member years. of Weight Watchers. That is so funny. You'll also get a shout out on a future episode. So we'll say your name and your company name. Everyone likes a little free publicity. So our super fans will get that on an upcoming show. Again, and and think like how much is it to advertise in a magazine? I mean, these, these are very cheap uh, options. So we appreciate you. <laughs> We're cheap. We're bringing it to you cheap, (laughs) y'all. So anyway, those are some of the things that we've been working on during this COVID-19 imposed sabbatical. We hope that you will support us and join us. Again, if you have gotten anything out of this podcast over the last three years, 159 episodes, we would love for you to pay it forward. We, uh, We appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for listening and thank you for supporting us. That's true. Well, this week, we are talking all about things that you can be doing with your COVID-19 imposed sabbatical. And our guest is Sarah Bollicky. Like I said, she has been on the podcast before. Sarah Bollicky, a wedding planner and designer, has been creating modern, fun-filled weddings that are distinct reflections of her clients' personalities for over 15 years. A logistics expert who's also a creative, Sarah brings a rare combination of skills and savvy to wedding production. Sarah is a West Coast native who, as a daughter of a minister, has been surrounded by weddings her entire life. After relocating across the country, Sarah founded Bella Note in Washington, D.C. in 2004. Sarah and her team are passionate about working with modern couples on creative, quirky, and fun weddings that are still stylish and sophisticated. Sarah's work has been featured in countless magazines, including Martha Stewart Weddings and Town and & Country, and Bella Note has been named one of Washington's best wedding planners by Washingtonian Magazine for over a decade straight. While they take pride in these accomplishments, they're most proud of their personalized approach with each couple, resulting in a wedding that truly represents their personal style, as well as a fabulous wedding celebration for all involved. Let's welcome to the show Sarah Bollicky. Welcome to the show, Sarah, second timer. We're so yeah. excited to have you again. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here again. And You're since on a very the- short list of two timers. Since the last episode, I got to meet, we got, well, Kimberly, you met Sarah before, but I got to meet oh, you in yeah. person. Yes, yes, we got to meet in person, which was awesome. And, oh, this is exciting. <laughs> Some people have websites now. Oh, we do. We <laughs> to the internet's us. <laughs> Excellent. But actually, this is like for both of you, because Annie got a website. Sarah, you did a whole rebrand situation yeah. you've been talking about for longer than Annie's been talking about having a website. Longer than I've been in business, I've been talking about it. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> Welcome to, to the, both of you. Both of you. Get the cheers. World Wide up. Web. Exactly. Us. <laughs> And well, so I know, I have to say, Sarah, uh, you were co- super cool on email and on podcasts, but you're way cooler even in person. So, uh, oh, thanks. Y'all met at the B Sage conference. Is that? Did. We yes. did. Yeah. Nice. So fun. Uh, oh, that's where we met too. It yeah. is. But it like, is. We met at like the first years earlier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, you know what's really funny to me is that when you were talking about taking a sabbatical last time, 
I really had no thought about getting a sabbatical. We were so young and naive <laughs> back in yeah. 2019. Yeah. <laughs> True story. True. Back then it was just a dream. It was like, I am so busy. I'm too busy to take time off. And, and now I'm, I'm contemplating gardening. I took up needlepoint <laughs> on the weekends. Like, what's right? wrong with me? You're all like, what am I supposed to do with myself? I'm locked in my house and I have no idea what's happening in the real world. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting is like for me, like for planners, it's like you're still working. Yeah, you know what I right. mean? Like there, we're still doing work, but it is totally different when you're not, at least for me, I work best under pressure when I'm like, I have to yes. do this because this event is coming up, you know? And now I'm like, I don't have events coming up yeah. in and the short And you have your weekends back. You've, and, you, yep. you're home uh, yeah. on Friday and Saturday nights, which is a rare, quite uh, a rare thing for you guys. It's kind of mind blowing. <laughs> like yeah. you're like, what do I do with weekends where I'm not working? I, yeah. It's so true. Yeah. Well, you're kind of the expert at this. <laughs> on, tell us what to do. Tell us. tell us what to do, Sarah. Because I feel like th these past few weeks have been kind of a blur, and uh, I don't think I've really um, learned many new talents other than Chardonnay and uh, Netflix. Mm. Mm -hmm. I have definitely worked on those skills as well. That is <laughs> that is a true story. I mean, I tend to veer towards the red wines, but same thing. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I think that it's, it's weird, right? Because it's not like for a sabbatical, typically you plan for it and you kind of, you know, you have time to prep for it. And this like, it's just like some shit show that we got dropped in the middle of yeah. um, all of a sudden. And, um, and I think the first couple of weeks, you know, we had a little bit more time. We were, it, we didn't have all the time we have now because we were trying to adjust everything. Right. And I, so, especially for you planners, you guys were those first couple of weeks, you guys were changing dates and moving things around and you guys were 24 like, seven. Yeah. Right. It was right. like chaos the first couple of weeks. Yes. And now it's like, this is real. Life. Well, yeah. now it's like you might even have a second round of change. Of, I mean, I know a lot Any, of people. I know Kimberly. I know I'm, bring you. Been, you I know Kimberly. You've been good. Where like, I feel like you don't have much. You don't have really. You've moved everything to the fall. But I know early stages people maybe even might have just moved stuff to June, and oh, oh. June is mm -hmm. iffy right now. It, I mean, oh, in I feel in like I'm nervous me. about September. Me, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I was gonna say. I think it's gonna be. It's it's gonna be rough. Um, yeah, and I think, so it's going to be rough, guys. Sorry. That's my optimistic take on a, the COVID and post about a call. Suck a big one, um, guys. No. So here, I think, here's the thing. We're all kind of in a little bit of crisis mode. And so instead of an actual sabbatical, like this isn't really like a break that you're taking. Yeah. I can't like go to the Maldives right now, you know? Right. Right. You're great. not. Especially without my family, that would be amazing. You know, not even a round trip, just a one way ticket to the Maldives. Peace out. Just, Working from home has, yeah, I'll has work clearly not work well. The internet's there. I'll bring my microphone. It's a, it's a struggle. It's funny because, you know, I think what we keep hearing a lot of is this it's almost like a catchphrase right now, but it's that you need to give yourself some grace. Um, but I've been giving myself grace for like four weeks now. <laughs> you know, like, it's about time. I gotta, you know, I think I, 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 get 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 a routine and get used to the new normal. Yeah, I think so, that is true. Though it's like this is the new normal, and how are we adjusting to that? Yes, and that is, I think that's kind of the thing is that we're all we were all used to having some sort of schedule. Like whether you worked at home, whether you worked in an office, you still had you know, your routine that you got up and did on a regular basis. And that's kind of all gone to hell in a handbasket. Um, so we're all resettling into things, but we're also dealing with the emotional toll of living through a crisis. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's this delicate balance of 
this is what I want to do because I have this ability to do all these things while I'm, you know, at home, not going anywhere. Um, but there's also that, oh, you really need to like make sure and take some time for yourself. Um, if you're anything like me, like after managing some of that, those first couple of weeks of craziness, um, you know, we probably, you sat down and you were like, okay, what am I going to do? And you have this like giant master list, right? Everybody like have a list. The archive, like things that I've wanted to mm -hmm. do in my life. Yeah. I never had time for. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The crazy, huge master list, um, which I totally sat down and did. And then I added like every week there's new things, right? There's something new that you're going to add it to. Um, and so obviously you still have, regular work with your clients that you're trying to do, but it looks really different than it did previously. And I feel like it's, for me at least, like I'm very much like you described, Kimberly, like you have a deadline and you're working towards, you know, getting things done for that deadline. And that's when I'm most productive. And so right now, without having deadlines, I feel a little at sea, you know, I feel yeah. a little bit lost. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think that one of the things um, that I'm really trying to do is make sure that I kind of like cut myself some slack um, and lower my expectations. So you guys talked to um, Alexandra at Ladybird Paper about working efficiently recently, yeah, yeah, um, which I thought was super helpful. Um, but I also, and I was like, this is so great. Like, I love all these things. And I was like, yes, I definitely do some of these things. But I also have come to realize, probably just in the last two weeks, that I just need to lower my overall expectation. Mm. Like, I cannot function in the same way that I could two months ago. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me, too. I feel like I'm the same, Sarah, where I don't know if it's like PTSD from filling out PPP forms or something, <laughs> but I just have this, like, just like, it's really hard for me to focus. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. Well, Annie, I also think part of it too is like, yeah. you're, you're not at your office. Right. I think and that I have, in and of like, itself, I is have, you have a child at yeah, home. Yeah. I have Bryn run. coming in every, like I try to set a timer for him. Like you can work 30 minutes and then you have 15 minutes off. I know we're, we're giving a lot of slack here, <laughs> but even that like, and then he's got, you know, he's eight years old. He's got questions. And I'm like, I have this new thing. I'm like, I'm like closing the window. I'm like, you knock if you have a question. <laughs> right? Well, and this, is like, the, this is the thing. We're all adjusting to like, you know, my partner is suddenly at home all the time and working from home, uh, right? Um, and my that, husband used to travel half the time. Like he was here. I mean, he was maybe in the month, two weeks out of the month. And yeah. now he's here every single day. <laughs> Right. And I'm like, what? I've probably spent more time last month than our whole entire 10 year marriage, 11 year marriage. <laughs> Which, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, that's a lot of adjustment. That is, it yeah. is. It so is. Giving grace. You need to give yourself some slack because that yeah. is a lot to adjustment. It yeah. really is. Totally. Yeah. That is, it's huge. Like, it is, like, you're living with your spouse at home and your kids at home. And even if you don't live with someone else, you're living in this state of like physical isolation that you've yeah. probably never done before. And I feel like all of that, like dealing with everybody being home with you all day and dealing with the interruptions and dealing, don't get me started on dealing with the news. Yeah. Um, it's all really exhausting, right? Yeah. So everybody needs to cut themselves some slack. That's like yeah. my big thing. And I talked about this a little bit, I think, on the last um, podcast where I said, you know, I had all these big plans that I was going to be done with when I got done with sabbatical and I accomplished some of them, but I didn't accomplish all of them. Um, and at first I felt really guilty about that. But at the end of the day, I came out of my sabbatical in a better place and more ready to work. And so I think that as we go through this period of time, we have to remember that at some point, let's all hope it's sooner rather than later, but at some point we'll get to leave our houses again and we'll get to go back to, you know, 
a new normal, but still something that feels a little bit more like normal. And you want to be You don't want to be so emotionally exhausted and physically tired at that point that you can't be productive, right? Yeah. I remember you saying, Sarah, the last time you were on the podcast that when you took your sabbatical and you came back, you were like more excited about your job. Like you were like, I like was more passionate about it. And I can see this break being the same way when, especially for those of us who are like on site at an event, like I think the break of not being on site and then going back whenever that is, when it's like you're back at an event, I think that energy will feel different. I'm going to be so fucking excited to go back to my office. (laughs) I am going to be so excited. I do. And I think, and I think that's really good for all of us. And I think that's one of those things that like right now when we're all struggling, it's really hard to wrap our heads around. But I do think that that's going to happen. And I think that people are going to be able to kind of dive in more and be more, you know, more excited to come back with their clients, more excited to everybody's going to want to celebrate. Like, this is the thing that I keep holding on to is that for our industry, like the thing to remember is that once we get out of this, people are going to want to celebrate because we haven't been able to do it in a while. Yeah. Or we've been doing it in a very different way. Um, yeah. So it, I, th- it has taught me. I mean, it has been very humbling because, and I'll be honest. I mean, I've gone from juggling usually anywhere from twenty five, fifty projects at a time to like I told. I mean, be honest. I have like eight projects right now, which that's you know I can do that in my sleep. You know, that's it's yep. it's it's hard because I'm just. And I, I like him. I like being busy, but I've had my business for seven years now. So business was coming to me. So I kind of got comfortable and now business is not coming to me. But right. when I am getting these inquiries, I feel like it's really made me step up that customer service a bit, you know, yeah. and the process. Like, I think I was kind of in that, like, Oh, maybe even ego, like, Oh, you know, you came to me like, like, I mean, I'm not, that was like, not that I wasn't giving good customer service, but it just was kind of, you know, like you were in that pile of, of 25 other projects. But now I feel like I'm, that has humbled me to be very um, appreciative of these well, projects. I think it's easy for all of us to just take for granted the things that we have, whether yeah. it's incoming business or just like, having an office or whatever it is. Like it's easy to take all of those things for granted until you don't have them. And then it's like, oh shit, like I needed to foster that more. You know what I mean? Just like appreciate it more. But I think that's true for everybody. I I think so too. And I think it's, I think it's one of those, and this is kind of like, that brings us to some of these things that I would say, like for the master list, like, what are you working on? Cause I think everybody feels this way, right? Like, even if you are getting inquiries right now, um, for some of them, you know, people are home and so they're working on planning their weddings, but people are also really cautious right now because sure. they don't know what their job looks like two months from now or four months from now. Um, and so it is, you know, one of the the top thing on my list because I am, you guys, I'm so bad at Pinterest. Like I'm so mm-hmm. bad at Pinterest. Um, and, um, so one of my things now that the new website is up is to go and pin all those images, um, so that there's more of my work in that space and it's easier to find for people. Um, and I was like, yes, this will be great. And like, it was like week two or week three that I was like, this is what I'm going to do. Guys, it's still sitting on my list. I haven't done it yet. (laughs) Yeah. It's like getting through that is hard. Um, but I think it's for me, I having that list is a form of comfort. I think this is a very like shockingly, most wedding planners are very type A. Uh, <laughs> and and so, you know, I and I think a lot of business owners, you know, we are if we're doing the function of running a business, like having that list and having that checklist and going through it is a nice thing to have. Um, and so, I mean, I would even say, sorry to interrupt you, Sarah. No, I would go even ahead. say like my list of like my backlog of things that I want to work on is in my head. But just hearing you say that makes me want to like 
put it on paper. Write it down. That's actually, that was going to be one of the things like this is, I'm like, I think we all have this list and a lot of us are keeping it in our head. And I think writing it down is really helpful because you can see things and you can sit there. And once you start listing them all out, like I also come up with like other things, like I'll put something on my list and then I'll be like, oh, so if I'm going to update Pinterest, well, there's obviously images I can pin from my website, but since you can also upload images directly, if there's an image I don't have on my website, but I want to put it on Pinterest, well, then I need to get that image from the photographer, you know, so you add like your list kind of keeps on going. Um, And so, which I think is great because you can see it and you can kind of be like, you can also pick projects based on how you feel each day. Because for me, this is a really big deal. So I was talking to a friend and she's like, I set up QuickBooks. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Like that you took your COVID break to set up QuickBooks for your business. And I was like, I would be totally overwhelmed by that. So that would be like for a week where I'm feeling really good about life, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Where I want to get going on it. Um, I think Kaylee's episode with you guys was perfectly timed about auditing your brand Because, you know, you can go through and look at all those things and kind of be like, yes, these are things that make sense for me to, you know, get to work on. Um, And it really is putting that whole list together. I feel like helps get it, like you said, out of your head into a place where you have something that you can be like, okay, I don't have as much work as I normally do. What am I going to do today? Because I kind of fall into like a twiddling my thumbs thing if I've done all my regular daily stuff and then I'm like oh what do I do now are you guys working eight hour days like I'm the kind of person where I feel like I always have to show up for eight eight hours even if I don't have the work I feel like that I feel like I could always find something else to do for those eight hours so funny you ask that. Oh, sorry, Kimberly. No, I just was, I was thinking about it. And what's interesting to me, actually, I was thinking about this prior to knowing that you were coming on the podcast. Because I still have work to do, I am really working like full days. However, I what I've learned about myself is that I, in general, like prior to this, I worked more than eight hour days. Like it took me longer than an eight hour day to accomplish everything I needed to accomplish in a day. Mm -hmm. And now I am working less than that. Like I shut it off at five, like every single day. And it is making me feel not productive because- Girl, I saw some emails at midnight last night. (laughs) (laughs) Wasn't that late? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that was podcast work, which I call a side hustle. <laughs> but my real job, I have been a fake job is fine. <laughs> but I, I used to work a lot more than I'm working currently, just like the sheer number of hours. And so, just because of that, I feel like I'm moving things forward slower. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense, or just like not getting to that extra stuff that I want to get to. And so then that makes me feel not productive when really a normal 40 hour work week is what a normal human should do, not what I was doing two months ago. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm explaining that. I'm such an instant gratification, like start, finish, like love when the project is done. Now I've got projects that, you know, that were in, you know, in the works in, you know, beginning of March, now they're being delayed until next year. So it's like, like, I mean, I've got some that are happening a year later, but they're already designed. So it's like twiddling my thumbs. What do we do with that? You know? So it's right. I, so it's funny that you ask about that because that was one of the things I was thinking about is this timing issue. And I, So I actually keep a spreadsheet. There are now apps that do this, but I started doing this before we all had apps on our phones that did this. Um, I keep a spreadsheet where I track time, worked on clients and various projects. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I came- That would probably depress me. (laughs) I'd be like, you you paid less than a McDonald's worker. It turns out that you have some clients that you spend less time on because they just are very fast with decisions. And then you have those 
more labor intensive clients. So what I've come to terms with is that ultimately it all averages out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yes, there. if you're looking at specific things, like that is certainly the case. But what I realized was that if I tracked six hours a day, that's pretty much the same amount of time that like someone working eight or nine hours in an office is working because they have these random, like someone stops at their door and pops in and they walk out to the water cooler and, you know, or there's this random conversation about, you know, what you saw in Tiger King, like any yeah. of those, you know, sorts of things. Um, so at this point, like, I'm like, if I make it to like four or five hours of track time right now, I feel like I'm super solid. And granted, over the whole day, like that, it's not like I accomplished that in a four to five hour block, it tends to be spread out over six or seven hours. Um, because, you know, you're taking a break for this and you're, walking the dog and you're doing, you know, whatever it is that feeding your children, um, doing all those things that you're doing at home now that you weren't doing in your office. Um, but I do think that, and I don't think there's anything wrong with working less. Like, I think this is another thing. And Kimberly, it's kind of like what you were saying is that like, you got so used to working X number of hours. And like Jamie, my spouse is a really good example of this. Cause like he would go to work and be gone for, you know, like a good, 10 hour day. And it's not that he's working substantially less now, but if there's like a lull at four, he can knock off at four and, you know, that day. And some days he might be working till six, but it doesn't actually, you know, they're not doing all the meetings they used to do in person. Like they've realized that they can cover some of those things in chat and in emails and you know, yeah. so there's some flexibility and I don't want anyone to feel guilty for working less now. Like, I think that's yeah. a big thing. The, I think the, that's hard for me, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. I think because I am not, I'm just clearly not as productive as I yeah. was before. And I think yeah. it's because I am so like deadline driven and I yeah. feel the that's most productive too. when I, um, when there's a sense of urgency, to be honest, right. like I feel yeah. like I do. And I most I would assume most planners are this way that like we thrive under pressure. Like right. if we didn't thrive under pressure, we are doing the wrong oh, job. Somebody please yeah. email being like, I need business cards in three hours because I <laughs> will get the YouTube, biggest you lady boner if you send that to me. Like, please. But Amy, I can understand that because you are definitely a like jump in when there's an emergency kind of person. Like if yeah. I have a printing emergency, you're the first person I'm going to yeah. call. Please, and you're please somebody send like, me a printing emergency. <laughs> please. Yeah, I can see why that is hard for you too. Like yeah. honestly, because that's, I work best under pressure. Right. And this is, and this is kind of the thing where I'm like, I feel like most of us are experiencing this and A, we don't really talk about it because everybody's like, oh, I've got so much. I feel like even in the midst of all this, everyone's still like, I have so much to do, right? Um, and so I feel like we're not really talking about the fact that like, we like we are working, if we're working a little bit less, we shouldn't feel guilty about it. And you know, yeah. you should take the time to like breathe and take the time to kind of, you know. I will say something that I have been doing that I really have enjoyed is because I do shut off my like real work. I'm using air quotes that not everyone can see. Um, <laughs> at five, like I have even like four thirty or four. Like I yeah. will go sit out on my patio because the weather's nice right now. Usually drink a glass of wine, um, but that like being at home and enjoying the outdoors is something I never really did before because mm -hmm. I would still be at the office until mm -hmm. six, six thirty, whatever, and then come home and then like figure out dinner and then lay on the couch and be exhausted. So it's like I have taken advantage of that. Yeah. When I never had done that before. That's awesome. Like I think and I think that's what people need right now. Like There's I think there's been a lot of mm. wine, Sarah. There, there have oh, so much wine, so much. <laughs> I, Kimberly knows me, and she knows that we have a lot of wine in our house. Same. And there was still a point where we had to go. Like, there was a. I feel like we're getting looser on this as we go. But like a Wednesday night at the beginning, it would be like, oh no, that wine's too nice to drink on Wednesday. I feel like. Oh. No, Sarah, we've had to go buy what my husband now calls swigging wine because yes. he's like. 
Your table wine. Our wine is too nice for just a Tuesday. Yes. And so now we have like the real wine we've always had. Right. And then just the coronavirus. I'm going to drink Your, a bottle. What is it? They call it Italy. Ta tablino, vino, vino, tablino, the table wine. <laughs> yes, you call, exactly. Uh, Vino Rodino, that's your roads. <laughs> How funny. But it's so true. It's like that. And then like, you know, it, then at some point, this is something I never thought I'd say. At some point I'll be like, oh, I've had a little too much wine in the last week and a half. Now I should switch to cocktails. <laughs> oh, I've done that. <laughs> right? No, I, yeah. that's what I, uh. No. I mean, I admit it, I have been, I, like, the first, like, it was just hard, like, the first couple of weeks, like, it just was such an unknown that, like, yeah, it was, like, four, you know, 4.30, 4 45, 5 o'clock, I would pour a glass of wine, and for me, I'm not, like, if I have a glass of wine, like, I can't be productive after that, like, I'm just, it just, I'm kind of a lightweight where it's, like, two glasses of wine and I'm loopy, um, <laughs> So I, I, um, I can't, I can't whine an email. Like you don't want to see that. Right. No, no. Kimberly, if you think I've got typos in my, in my sober emails, you should see <laughs> whine emails. Um, woo. Uh, yeah. Made that mistake before. Uh, but it, I, it just was like, yeah. And then that led to, a, you know, dinner and then like a late night snack. And yeah. So let's yeah. just, my pants were getting a little tight. So I, uh, <laughs> Last week, I have like I signed up for a like a telemedicine nutritionist that ch I'm checking in with um, every week. Um, just oh, to kind of nice. keep me that's on track. Cool. Um, I have to bring out my scale and like weigh weigh on in front of her on the computer, which is really terrifying. Um, but at least it's keeping me on track. That's that cool. is yeah. excellent self care, Annie. Like excellent self care. That is totally what everybody needs to be doing right now. Is like finding. You know, and Kimberly, it's funny when you said that you have drunk more wine and exercised more, because I feel like that is what most people are saying. Yeah. Like, they're like, I, you know, you can't go places. So then, you know, you hop on your Peloton, if you're the two of you, with your cycling mm -hmm. ways. Uh -huh. you know, I'm not going to be Julianne Huff and like come out of this with abs, you know, like. No. No, no. but. But like I was even talking to a planner friend of mine the other day and she's like, I have been running and like walking more. Like I just need to get out of the house. And so I just like go on a walk in the neighborhood, which is something I don't think most of us were in the middle of the day just being like, I need to now go on a walk to get out right? of the house. You know what I mean? Or like get out of my office. So I, I mean, if we're trying to look at the silver lining, I think that this forced sabbatical i think it's, has probably changed some people yeah slowed us yes. down but also like changed some habits at least for me it has like i have been drinking more water i'm doing a water challenge right now i have been exercising way more than i had before i i am drinking more wine but the water and exercise is making me feel less bad about balance it. is out right balance it's all balance yeah. absolutely uh no and i think that's like one of the things that i kind of realized i think for especially for planners right like we're all really good in a crisis and so the first couple of weeks like we were i think we were all super you know some people were like what is this like being at home thing i don't know what's going on and we were all managing things and so we were super productive and we were great but then you get to like week three week four and you're kind of like oh okay what do i do now and this is where you start to get into like those types of things like get out and take a walk, you know, um, do, you know, stop working at a reasonable hour and to have your glass of wine on the patio. Um, I've kind of been looking at like, what do I normally do that like helps to keep me balanced and makes me feel better. Um, and so like, I, you know, I love my book club and that for me is always a big deal. And then I have a supper club that meets once a month. And normally we go out to dinner at a new restaurant um, and catch up and offer support. And we laugh a lot, which I think is really important in times of crisis. Um, and so, you know, we were like, well, let's just try this online. Like everybody make your own food and show up and we're going to do this. And I mean, I think we're all a little Zoom exhausted, but if there's something that you do regularly that you can figure out how to maintain it, 
I think it really helps to keep, you know, us in a better place, which makes us better able to work through that list of to do things and to be there for our clients when we need to be and, you know, just keep going and not feel so, I mean, I'm basically tired all the time right now. Like this is my, like, it, this is emotionally exhausting. And so I just am tired. Like that's, it is what it is, right? I, I don't know what it is about this week, but I feel like this week, this week has really hit me, kind of slapped me in the face. Like, okay. Like I'm just, yeah. I, I don't know if I just yeah. was like, like just, full, this is like week five, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know if I, if I, it's like reality set in, but this week yeah. I am, I'm exhausted and I haven't that was, done much <laughs> right? to be exhausted. But it's probably like mentally exhausted yeah. and like emotionally exhausted, which then makes you physically exhausted. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. It's all of those things. And so I think it's important to like stay in touch with your people, like the people that make you feel good and the people that are supportive of you and the people who can talk you off a ledge. Right. Because mm -hmm. we all get to a point in our business where we're like, oh, my God, I'm panicking about X, Y, Z. Um, and there are certain people that, you know, you're kind of like this is my crisis right now. And they'll be like, okay, take a deep breath. Yeah. Let's talk well, about that. There was even a point, like, I think it was two weeks ago where like we do a weekly call with um, like my cross the street neighbors. Like we, we do like yeah. house party um, app. Um, and I even like, honest, like, I, like we're on a group text. So I was like, like, I want to be honest. It is like, I'm too sad to talk right now. Like, yeah. I'm like, I just don't, like, I don't even want to talk. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, yeah. and they're like, it's okay. Like, you know, it's fine. I was like, I don't, like, last thing I want to do is, like, talk about my business. Like, like, I, like, even if I'm going to have a business, like, I just, like, two weeks ago, I, like, like, I was just so sad. And it, yeah. Like, I feel like I would, like, the stages of grief. Like, I was sad. Yeah. I was angry. Yeah, I was a real thing. You know, it, 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 um, it just, like, my emotions are just all over the place right now. Right. And I think, and that for me is, like, the big thing that, we need to be okay with. Cause I think there's a lot of stuff out there where people are like, I crossed this project off my list and I just accomplished this. And you know, I did X, Y, Z and it's great. And it's what you see on social media, Yeah, but in the real world, like, like, I don't we fucking all care that be. you did the, the push up challenge. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was so glad no one challenged me to that. I would have died. Uh, I've dropped <laughs> some major F bombs in this, this episode. Sorry guys. All right. Find your kids. <laughs> I also think, though, that at least for me, I have gone through days of like super productivity. Yes. And then I've gone through days of like, I'm going to get up and work for an hour and then climb in bed and feel sorry for myself. Yeah. And <laughs> the last time I did that, I started listening to like some motivational podcast and then I was like oh my gosh why am I feeling sorry for myself get your ass out of bed <laughs> um and you'll have to send those to you <laughs> they do make me feel less sorry for myself but I think that's you know it's okay yeah to have, like productive days and days where you're just like what the hell I think I think that we sometimes forget that this is like world changing meaning yes. like this is something people tell their grandchildren about like yeah. remember that time in 2020 when this happened like this is something that we oh, will yeah. like, we'll, we'll hear the word 20 and we'll all roll up in the fetal position like, yes <laughs> that, that's it's gonna happen it's but, so like, true it's easy to forget that this is such a big thing you know yeah. what I mean? Like this is a life changing thing and we're living in it. So when you're living in it, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm tired and I'm feeling sorry for myself. But really it's like, we should be fucking yeah. tired. This has never happened right? in our <laughs> lifetime. And I mean, like, they're always like, well, this happened with the Spanish flu and all that. Well, it's like, sorry, right. I wasn't around in 1918. <laughs> um, and also like there wasn't social media during that time. Right. So they didn't have that to deal with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and this is kind of, I think this has been for me, what makes like functioning right now very possible is I've totally been doing the same thing you're talking about, Kimberly. Like I'll have some days where I'm super productive. Like one of the first things I did, and this is something that I really, for every single person in the wedding industry, I would encourage you to do this. Um, and I'm sure that Michelle Loretta touched on this when you guys had her on, um, but you do like, for me, it was really important to revisit my cash flow. 
plan and kind of look at it. And whenever, like, whenever we're rescheduling clients, we're restructuring our payment system for them. Um, and sometimes it's really weird timing, but you know, you kind of have to look ahead and be like, what's going to make sense? Like, if I have, if I'm moving something from this June to next June, like, I guess I can totally add a payment in January, which seems like a really weird time, but is also a time that I'll probably really want money, yeah. um, you know? And so there's some things like there's some things that I think are really beneficial, but if I spend a day like doing that and laying out new plans for all my clients, then the next day I might just be sitting in my office, you know, watching a, some marathon of a crazy TV show and like organizing some files or like reading a book. Um, because yeah. yeah, you don't, you know, I also think, and this Michelle talked about this a little bit, but I think I'm sure everybody has done this, but it has been helpful to me to look at my expenses and things that yeah. I just would spend money on and not even think twice about it. And now I'm like, do I need, do I need that? Like, do I yeah. need to be spending money on that? Um, yeah. cause well, I'm notorious for just the, like, eh, it's not that much. I have the money and blah, blah, you know what I mean? But then I'm like, right. but do I need it when I'm talking right. about like my cash flow completely changing, like what I'm spending money on also has needs to change. Well, yeah. a big part of me <laughs> and a big part of my life was outsourcing. Like, I right. would outsource, uh, you know, we had a cleaning lady, we yep. had, uh, would have meal prep, uh, we would have, um, you know, uh, an accountant, I have, you know, for my business, I have, I have uh, outsourced, uh, you know, production des design, like little things like here are, you know, outsourced my branding, my website, stuff like that. And <laughs> what's scary is like, now I don't have the funds really to outsource that much. Now I got to do it all myself. And I realize I'm not good at that stuff. <laughs> you know, like Kimberly, you're, you're a good, what do you call it? Is it a bootstrapper? You call it like you like, you like do that stuff. I don't like doing that shit. Like I pay people to do that for a reason. Right. You know, it, yeah. I don't have many talents. This is not true. <laughs> Shut up. Really hard on yourself. But it's like, I, I, I mean, I, don't want to do my accounting accounting and I've outsourced that for you know since I've had a business yeah I'm keeping my accountant for now but it's like these little things when it gets down to it but I am you know I'm paying her hundreds of dollars a month which right. I don't know if I'll be able to afford that in the next few months so then I might have to do it myself but you know it's like little things like that, that yeah. I, realize, I mean it's hard this is hard yeah I've taken oh, yeah. it I know I just I know a lot of my life has been outsourced and I know now I have the time to do it myself, but I don't want to do it myself. <laughs> totally. And there's a certain amount of things that I'm just like, I mean, I girl, I am with you. Like having someone come in to clean is like, mm. it is one of like my yeah. basics in life. We have, yeah. some, we have someone had someone coming in that would always do our laundry for us. Oh my God. I've never, I haven't done like, laundry yeah, in like Annie? 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I no do my own laundry. No, I sound like the biggest brat right now. I sound like no. the biggest no, no, spoiled no. brat. But I'm just uh, not yeah. used to it. Right. You're like, this is a thing. I know. Well, I was thinking about this. I feel like this is an excellent opportunity for you to get your son to learn how to do laundry. Mm, true. <laughs> You're like, no. I was like, that's totally what my parents would do. I've taught him, but he hasn't followed through with it. He hasn't followed through. Following through. And like, it's the, it's the moment, right? Where you're like, look, we're all living in a different world right now. You learn how to do laundry, honey. This will be great when you go off to college. Yes, that's true. <laughs> I need to oh do that. My God. I, I'm for child labor and also arranged marriages, too. <laughs> because like I want I want to go on trips with fun other fun grandparents, you know? So like yeah. I want to I want him to marry my friends so then we can all go on like fun beach trips together. There you, know? you go. Yes, I like that. All about me. <laughs> right, because well, everything right now, honestly, any beach trip right now, I'm going to take as a win. Oh, I'll go <laughs> to like yeah, I don't care, like Gulf Shores, Alabama right now. Right. I will anywhere. 
<laughs> You're like, someone let me out. Oh my God. Yeah. No, I think it's, you know, I think right now it's just, we've all got a lot of stuff that we're trying to juggle. And, you know, like you said, this, this unprecedented event that's worldwide. Like, it's not like we can even be like, oh, the U.S. is having this problem, right? It's yeah, everywhere. It's we can't we can't escape it. Like, you know, right. you, you get on Facebook, it's on there. You get on Instagram, it's on there. You turn yeah. on the news, it's on there. You yeah. listen to a podcast, we're talking about it. Like, you right? know, you can't, you can't <laughs> escape it. You can't. It's true. I, and honestly, I had to, one of the things I had to do early on was I can read the newspaper, but I can't watch the news on TV. That's a good idea. You know what I, do you guys know the skim? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, that's really what I do is every morning I read the skim. It gives me enough news to know what's going on and that's it. Well, it's yeah. just hard too. There's so much information and like, especially on social media, like people interpret it their own ways and it's like, right. you know, you just don't know what to believe. And everything just kind of gets, it's like a game of telephone, you know, one person right. says something, one person says something, one person, and then the end thing, you don't know what, what the truth is. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, hey, I have no idea what happened. Sarah, I'm curious because you have your list written down. Of, yes. You know, you're long. Other than Pinterest. Yes. What is what, on the list? Cause yeah, I'm what curious. other business things. Yeah. I've got, we, we've got our branding and website done. Right? Yeah, you're good. Exactly. We're all good on that. It only took, you know, 327 years. Um, right. Pandemic for that. Y'all did that pre-pandemic. Mm -hmm. Right? We were ahead of the game. Exactly. Um, yeah. No, I, um, so I do, you know, obviously, like I said, Pinterest is kind of my thing that I like, that's one of the things I need to focus on. But also like, I feel like I have to, you know, you're always trying to schedule some Instagram posts, like managing your social media. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to do it in a way that's like, I kind of try in the comments to give a nod to what we're all going through right now, because you don't want things to fall on deaf ears, right? Like you don't want it to seem like you're not, like Aware. you're oblivious. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Are you succumbing to the uh, Instagram stories yet, Sarah? Are you doing? So them? I don't, I don't. No, Instagram is where it's at. Are you jumping on the Kimberly, Abby Jew I, no, I, bandwagon? I haven't, I haven't done it yet. And I feel like, I feel like, I know I need to, but that I is. Into this. Now's the time. Yeah. People are bored. I mean, on Sunday, I watched a uh, zombie high school on the Disney Plus, And I just, I realized <laughs> my kid wasn't even watching it with me. Like I watched this watching it by myself. Right? I do. I know. I feel like I need to like get my face in front of the camera, but it is like, it's a struggle for me. I had to do it a little because they did um, the local wedding magazine here did tips early on about like what to do if you're having to reschedule when COVID was just starting. And I think I had to tape it like six times before I was like comfortable with it. Listen, no one needs to know that. It's fine. <laughs> Record it six times. Delete five of them. It will get easier. Abby G said it. I believed her. Or I didn't believe her at the time. Now right? I think she was right about everything. <laughs> Is there like a filter that will like make my roots not show? And swipe to the right. Paris well, filters. Where one not like to the right, girl. One wonky eyebrow because the Botox <laughs> is wearing out. Like no, no more eyelash extensions. Right. We're going all natural raw here. Seriously, low maintenance but, people. We're all like becoming low maintenance. People don't care right now. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, people don't care. I get dressed. I mean, today is not a good example, but <laughs> I typically get dressed each day just because it makes me feel better. I do too, yeah. But I don't think people really care. Like when they're yeah. watching it, at least for me, I watch people's stories who like, they're clearly in workout clothes all day long and I yeah. don't care. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Yeah. So, you know, social media obviously is a thing. Um, client intake, like revising the client intake process, like going through all my paperwork and being like, okay, this is what we currently send. Are we happy with it? Do we want to change it? Do we want to use a different system? Um, you know, I think there's everything in the world for people to use right now. Um, I have a question for you guys with me being you know, you guys, you, you are both planners. I am a vendor and I, you know, I am needing work <laughs> right now. Um, 
as but I also don't want to be asking for business because I know we're all in this together but how can I as a vendor reach out to a planner in a not so not cold collie but like a, a way of being like hey I'm here I would love if you have anything I love you know I love some work <laughs> right and I think like how do I reach out and get business with planners right now or should I just like just shut my mouth and just and not even do that right now well I have thoughts but then Sarah I want yours as well I feel like it is not reaching out to ask for the business, but just reaching out to check yeah. in uh -huh. yep. to like stay top of mind, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Like, it, I don't think it's like, hey, I need some work, but like, hey, just How's check it going? in. It's, yeah, like yeah. this is crazy times. I just was thinking about, you know what I mean? Just like yeah. staying top of mind, at least for me. Yeah, and I think that that's great. I also, so like the things I, totally appreciated people who have been willing to reach out and just be like, hey, just checking in. But I also, um, you know, as clients are moving, I'm kind of like, okay, so I have these weddings coming up in the next month or two, and those clients have now, you know, postponed. So I was like, oh, I need to figure out what I'm gonna send my clients on their wedding day, um, their original wedding day. And so I was talking this through um, with a couple friends in the industry. And I was like, I really want, because my, my clients are like, they're in it for the party, right? Like they're mm -hmm. excited to get married and be married, but they're really in it for like just this big party. And I was like, I really need something that, you know, is like, we're going to need to party so hard when this is over right something that's just like really tequila. Like silly and vodka. <laughs> right tequila. yeah tequila yeah. tequila 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 well one of my friends was like oh why don't you do coasters because that'd be which is great and it was and so and it was actually a stationary friend that came back to me and said you could totally do that on coasters because i was like i'm clearly going to send alcohol obviously, uh, because what do we all need right now? Um, but I was trying to figure out like what else to include. And so, you know, if I hadn't been processing that, like talking through it with someone, you know, I never would have been like, oh, that totally makes sense. Like that would be a great way to do it. We can support small businesses by creating them, you know, use small businesses to create something like that. So I think it's worth reaching out just to be like, hey, are you working on any special project? Like, do you have anything that I could be of assistance with? You know, I'm checking in and also, you know, I have some extra time on my hands. <laughs> so if you're working on anything, you know, that I can help with, let me know. Like, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Um, yeah. I don't know. Kimberly, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, I just think it's, I just think reaching out for me, at yeah. least reaching out to check in yeah. just means a lot. Yeah. As opposed to reaching out to ask for business. Yeah. yeah. Because I feel like when people reach out, at least right now, I've gotten several emails from people I don't know that are reaching out to ask for business. And I'm like, are you effing kidding me right yeah. now? Like, yeah. Well, just to show that you're there and you're op like, op I mean, not open, but like yeah. you're open for business. But yeah. The scary thing is too, like, I don't, I mean, some businesses might not be around in right. six months. So, you know. Just, I mean, I, uh, my first conference I ever went to, um, Stacia Academy, um, Natalie Chang is, um, she's a, a merchandiser, um, works for, uh, Lily Pulitzer and Kate Spade. And, um, her, her like biggest thing was like, just like, you don't have to be selling yourself, but just sometimes just showing up, you know, yeah, is like half yeah. the battle, like just showing yeah. up or just, yeah, just checking in, just showing that you're there. Um, Yeah. Well, like and people I, know you're you're like open. I, yeah, I've had clients whose weddings are in the future also ask me that about vendors. Like, right. should we be concerned about vendors that we're hiring, about vendors staying in business? And the answer is yes. Right. But, but there's nothing we can do. No, there's nothing we can do. Yeah. But I do think it, back to like the Instagram stories, <laughs> back to the yeah. social media. I yeah. do think it is important at this time for sure. us to be present. To yeah. show that we're around, to show that we're still in it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Because 
we like we as vendors are also thinking like some vendors are not going to make it, but okay. clients are wondering that too. Like, and I'm saying yeah. that from clients who have said it to me and moms who have asked me and brides who have asked me, like, do we need to be worried about any of the vendors that we've already hired? Do we need to be right. worried about what vendors we haven't yet hired that you're going to suggest to us? Like it is a concern. And if we're pretending like it's not, then we're doing us ourselves a disservice. You know what I mean? Yeah. I agree with that. And Annie, I think too, so the other thing I would say, just because you're a stationer, because I like one of my other things that I think people should be doing right now, because an email is great, right? But I have had a couple of friends that have just sent snail mail notes mm -hmm. um, through the post office. Yay, save USBS. Um, and, <laughs> and post office. I know, the poor post office. Um, and so like, I think that just like sending something out to people just to be mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm thinking of you, like, you know, that's yeah. like an awesome option. Because they do think you want to make sure people are aware that you're still around. I have gotten lazy on with my Instagram because it's just been so chaotic lately. And sometimes the social media break is like the right thing for me to do. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. I but I like having taken when I take a break, I know that I'm going to have to go back and be like, okay, like we need to post things and we need to be more active and we need to make sure people still know we're here and that we're doing things. Um, and I think a lot of people are working on like new special projects or like a new offering of some sort right now because they're trying to figure out like, what can you do? You know, yeah. um, I think as planners, like some of us have clients that are like, well, great, I'll move my party next year, but I still want to get married this year. And so you're like, OK, well, how do we create a 10 person wedding, you know, for you that's relatively simple, but still feels celebratory? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's it's kind of like people are always, you know, everybody's brainstorming right now. And so I think it's it's worth just being like, hey, thinking of you, checking in to see how all this is going for you, you know, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else is, oh, <laughs> Orca, you guys, so I work from home. So you guys are both at home temporarily, but you have offices that you go to. Mm -hmm. um, but I work. Praise like Jesus. Right now. Yeah, that's not right anyone's now. idea of fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I have organizing my office on my to do list for which is actually a great thing for me because it's mostly mindless. So if it's one of those days where I feel like I can't really handle or like, you know how you get off three Zoom meetings in a row and you're like, oh, my God, I can't deal with like seeing another person for the next yeah. three hours. Yeah. Um, so like that's on there and it's, you know, it's something that I perpetually need to do. And so right now my office looks like a tornado hit it because I started pulling everything apart to put it back together. Um, so that's on my list. Um, oh, this is fun. Um, conquer the to-do list that you left the last conference you attended with. Mm, so die, I, yeah. good, right? so I got good. to see both of you at BSAGE this mm -hmm. year. And which was awesome. Um, and I'm sure that you guys left with a list like mm -hmm. I did. That was like, these are things I need to do when I get home. And I've done like one of 12 things on that yeah, list. Yeah, that's so, I'm going to go find that list. Yeah, so right. Remember. That's on my list. And then, oh, have you guys done this? So you have bought an online class in the past. Oh, gosh. And then you did it actually. You life. You haven't taken time to take mm. the class, right? I always yeah. start it, but then I, I did. Died. I got um, that master class for Christmas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I've, I've been like three classes, but yeah, I can totally. Yeah. But they're all like like not business classes, like wine and. Well, I did a negotiating class, and then I did a comedy class, and then the wine class. Those See? are all basically I'm covered for life there. Negotiating yeah, wine yeah, and comedy. Got everything in. Yeah. But to like doing, yeah, doing the online classes I've purchased is also on my list. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's it's kind of like it's a lot of different things in different places. And some of them are like Well, and also like um at B uh at B Sage, uh Heather it's Vickery, is it? Yeah. Vickery was one of the speakers and she was she's uh was very like positive uplifting talk. I think she, she talked about burnout at Be Sage, but I, I follow yeah. her on social media and she like one of her posts and this was like a like two or three weeks ago, it really hit me was like you don't have to be fucking productive in the middle of a pandemic. Yes. 
you know, hundred like, percent. You know, like, yeah. You know, I don't. It is just a struggle with me because, and I've done this for myself. Like, I've have I have always said I can be a, I can be a good business uh, person, a good businesswoman. I can be a good mom, and I can be a good wife, but not all three at the same time. A hundred percent. I say the same all, things. I'm having to do that all at the same time, and it that's that's what's hard for me. Like I would always, yeah. I could never be a mom and work. At, I was never the mom that like brought the baby and the Moby wrap to my <laughs> office. I did it one time and he cried and I was like, you're never allowed in my office again. Like, you know, it's just like, I would always separate those things or, yeah. and then, um, and that's, it may, it worked for me, but it also has bitten me in the butt now during this time. And it's, oh. it's hard to, adapt and adjust to that yeah well and I think you know some days you you can be like screw it like this is not a work day this is yeah. a me yeah. hanging out with my Sunday and that's you know that's the thing I literally there are some days where I get up and I look at my partner and I go honey I'm a little stressed out and grouchy today so you probably just want to leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he appreciates the warning. Right? Like, I'm like, it's just, you can't, you can't do all those things at once, especially not right now when you're dealing with this. Um, I, I think I read this somewhere and I was like, oh my God, this is so true. Like about being realistic about everything we can do right now. It's that perfectionism and coronavirus don't mix. Mm, and yeah. I think so many of us in the wedding industry are perfectionists and like as business owners, like you want to do things a certain way and make sure it's all done, you know, correctly. Um, we have a hard time with done is better than perfect. Um, and so, you know, that I was like, oh my God, that's so true. And like, we all well, need have to you guys, that. Um, there's a thing going around. It's um, Ed Libby kind of did this, uh, uh, the tabletop, the tabletop design challenge of yeah. like use what you have um, and, you know, use what you have in your house and make a tablescape because, you know, let's make every night a celebration, which, yes, it's a great idea, a great concept. But I got nominated and I was like stressing out over that because I was like, it's got to be perfect. You know, like I got to, you know, I got to order linens in. I got to, you know, like all, all this stuff like I've, you know, I've got a reputation to withhold. And I had to like right. be like, Annie, what are you doing? Like, right. You know, I do not need to order liner, linens in and order chairs in for this dinner tabletop Instagram yeah. post. Like, I need, to, I had to have a little come to Jesus with myself about that. Seriously, I feel like that's a thing. Like, I feel like, and I, like, I always say that I, I use my pretty and my organizing at work. So you can't expect the same thing in my house. I wish. 100%. Right? right. Like, I wish I was Kelly McWilliams and I had my dinner table always set like I was going to have a dinner party, but I am not. I, Kelly uh, McWilliams would be like, uh, girl, no. I <laughs> I wish my, like, she's not like that. She does like to have her dinner table set. It's a thing. It's one of her weird quirks. It's I fun. That, Kelly. Yeah. I love it. It's not like she uses it all the time. Like it's just like the formal dinner table is set, um, which I think is so cute. Like I like, oh, I like that. But she also has like oodles and canoodles of like all the tableware. Yeah, she, it's the stuff. Yeah, she yes. Which you know, when you're a renter for stuff, it's not the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. No, I that Annie. I will not lie that that challenge stressed me out a little bit. I was like, I don't know that I like this. Like, I don't know that I want to be put on the spot at home and, and, you know, and I did it like, um, if everybody wants to go to my Instagram, see, I did it. I did it for Easter brunch, but like my husband was making fun of me because I was putting like ketchup and ramekins. He's like, why the hell are you putting ketchup and ramekins? And then like, he was like, what is a ramekin? And I didn't even know we had a ramekin. <laughs> right. And like, he's like, why are we using all of these platters for dinner i'm like shut up it's for a picture <laughs> i gotta take a picture <laughs> exactly you're like i need the photo yeah no i basically was like i'm gonna order like i ordered easter flowers that was like my big thing i have a florist friend that's doing touchless deliveries uh contactless deliveries and so i ordered easter flowers and then i did like a couple super simple like additional things and was just like, that's it. That's as good as it's getting people. Like, Well, I will 
trump you guys on that because I got nominated twice and I just went, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I I really hope somebody can somebody do it with like paper plates and paper towels and uh, like plasticware and a takeout dinner. That would be I mean, hilarious. Yeah. Be amazing. That, yeah. I mean, honestly, I love it. I love it. I do too. Concept, and I, I am honored to be nominated to do it, but I just was like, I'm not I didn't even nominate space. anybody. <laughs> I just posted it myself. Cause I was like, and, I don't want to trouble anybody with this burden. It. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, in this like time of self care, I was like, I'm going to stress myself yeah. out. It yeah, stressed me. I was stressed out like, for a full week. I was like, yeah. I was like uh, making a, like a, uh, I was sketching a design. Yeah. And I was like, oh, God. Oh, God. I need, I need to yeah. tone, tone it down, Annie. Yeah. 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 No. I, yeah. And I, Sarah, I'm like you. Like, I spend my days designing for other people. Yeah. My house, I am just glad I have matching plates. Like, right? I, I just don't care about it in my own personal life. I don't. So, totally. I mean, I'm in a self care. I'm using this to circle us back to our topic. Oh. I'm using this COVID 19 imposed sabbatical to do a little more self care than I typically have. Although I do miss a good massage because that is part of my like yeah. self care regimen, especially after weddings. But like, I've been working out more. I've been just like getting more sleep than I normally yes. have. I've been like, see, I can't, I'm having a hard time sleeping. Oh, that's a bummer. But I have a good self-care tip. Um, If you guys on Amazon, there's this stuff called um, baby feet. Have you heard of it? No. It's baby, baby baby feet. And it's this like mask you put on your feet. It's like, it's a plastic like footy and you put it in your feet and you put it, you like uh, wear them for like an hour. It's like these little oh. plastic booties and then you take it off and then you're supposed to soak your feet um, every night for like 10 minutes after that. And you're like layers of skin come off, <gasps> but it's very satisfying to see all these layers of skin come off. I don't know if that's amazing. My feet are like super soft now. I think it's kind of both, Kimberly. Yeah. The yeah. Other day, the other, like Friday night, like was spent. Like my kid was like picking the skin off my feet. He was like, "This is gross, but really cool, mom." <laughs> Maybe I should have admitted that on. Uh, <laughs> That's how we did Friday night. We picked dead skin off uh, mom's uh, feet. Well- You know what? It is about family time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I was going to say one of the things that I was like, like the big takeaway, I think, from this entire discussion is that you should be doing what feels right for you right now. And if that's what it is, Annie, then that's what it is. Like, if you're able to, like, get through that to-do list, like, you're, first of all, write your master to-do list just because you'll feel better having a list. Um, So write it down. But, like, if you're able to get through it, that's amazing. But if, like, making progress on it, it's overwhelming and you're just, like, I just need to have, like, sit on my patio with a book and a glass or bottle of wine, then, you know, I think that that's, yeah, (laughs) right. I do like your idea, though, Sarah, of, like, not only making the list, but, like, picking what you work on based on how you feel. Yeah. Because... I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me Um, because sometimes it is like I can do, I can pin on Pinterest when I'm sitting on my patio with a glass of wine. Yes. But I cannot think through my intake forms when I'm doing that. Exactly. I can have a full list and then you can pick and choose with the occasion or like how you're feeling. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think it's great. I mean, I think it's one of those things that like, Do what feels appropriate to you because what you don't want to do is like stress yourself out. Yeah, that's the hard thing that's going to be coming out of this, um, like this sabbatical. Um, Some of us are going to come out refreshed, but some of us are going to come out even more stressed out. And I guess we got to take this time to not be, to use us to de stress, to innovate, to be creative. Not necessarily to do anything, but you know, just to get yourself with the mindset of, being creative or just resting your mind to be creative later. Yes. Yeah. I like it. 
And also to like build better habits, you know, like yeah. at least for me, that's what I've been doing. I used to yeah. like get up and from the time I got up, like to get into the, like I'd be scrambling to get to my office before my first mm-hmm. meeting just because I over, you know, whatever. And now I'm like, yeah. nope, I'm going to take some time in the morning. I have time to take my out. vitamins in the morning. Right. Take my vitamins, I'm, you know, whatever, like just building better habits, I think yeah. during this time so that when it does get crazy, you already have that like habit formed of like this yeah. is how my day starts That's, that is you know? good that's good yeah 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 and like washing so. your your uh makeup off at night sometimes you wouldn't do that you know like now i've got oh, the yeah. time to do that <laughs> i'm so bad at that yeah i mean i think at the end of the day it's like give yourself some more like be more forgiving about your expectations create some new habits that make you feel good about yourself right now and you know get through it, get through it all. So I like it. Sarah, yeah. thanks for joining us time number two. <gasps> thanks for uh, having me again. I hope it was helpful. You know, I have a new perspective on the sabbatical. Honestly, the first time you came, I was like, there's no way, there's no way I can take a time off. There's no <laughs> way. I mean, you know me. I was like, there's I do. no way. What do you mean? Take a time off and don't check your email. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, Sissa, I- didn't you, you went, was it, did you go to Napa after or before uh, Sarah was on last? I don't remember, but I did, when I went to Napa, I did not travel with a laptop and it was like the first time ever. So impressed. So weird, but it's possible. It is. And it feels pretty good when you do it. Yeah, and great. when we get these, you know, vacations, um, when we'll be able to take vacations again, we'll be so grateful for them. Yes. That is totally true. Well, thanks for having me, ladies. It's always fantastic to talk with you. Always. Hopefully we'll hopefully we'll be able to go to a conference again. Yeah. <laughs> that would be really lovely. <laughs>